Okay. <laughs> we, we shall see. Like I said, we are uh, awaiting that call from Big Al. So while we wait, though, let's go ahead and take some more questions, uh, and, and we can we can answer them. McCade Pearson asks, uh, what is up, y'all? Loves y'all's work. We appreciate it. Thank you. What, who is the biggest X factor for the Jazz this year? Dante Exum, baby. Is that just because his name has an X in it, Tony? X gonna give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, is that your real answer? Or do you do, do you have a rationale for your answer? It, why, is, my, why is, it is my real, honest-to-God answer. Why is he the X factor? Because the Jazz think that they can be special if he's good. <laughs> They they should also hope that they are special without him, because if we've learned anything about Dante Exum, uh, counting on his availability, the best availability is availability, okay, and he you, has not shown you, it so do far. Do you want a solid X Factor? Do you want a more solid sure, X Factor? Sure, what else we got? Royce O'Neal. Okay. Is that better? I I, I mean, uh, Dante is a fine answer. Dante is a real okay. answer to that you, question. Dante is definitely a real answer. I'm just saying that, you know, if you're counting on him to be special, uh, you need to you need to realize what that means. Whereas Royce O'Neal, I think, can step up. Now, Royce O'Neal, had, he had a weird season last year. He was much more efficient, but he only used 11% of Jazz possessions. He used the ball less than Joe Ingles in his rookie season. He was basically like, he was out there avoiding shots. And I, I don't think he'll be able to do that this year. If he, he gets open shots, he needs to take but them. But I think he's going to embrace his role this year. And I think he's, I think he's a lot more comfortable. Uh, I think okay. he's comfortable with the fact that he knows that he's uh, – a bona fide NBA rotation player. Uh, I thought that he got better as the season went on. I thought that he struggled at the beginning of the season, kind of, tr- kind of trying to find his place on 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 the team. Mm. Um, and then by the playoffs, he was he was fine. He was one of their best players. He was really good. Yeah, he in was the, in that in that Houston series, and and has been in in a couple playoffs in a row now. Uh, yes. I, th- I think he is. A good example of a guy who who makes a difference in in the playoffs, you know. So, uh, let's go to our next question. Jazz Camelot asking, how important is roster continuity from one year to the next uh, for a team trying to win an NBA title? Uh, you know, the percentage of a team's minutes from the previous season returning the following season. Because the Jazz don't have a lot of continuity. You know, they only have seven or eight players returning from last year's roster. But you look at the whole NBA, they're actually above average in continuity just because you look at the minutes returning from guys like Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, Dante Axum, Royce O'Neal, et cetera. The yeah, NBA champions had like three very new starters. Yes. <laughs> so uh, they had Kawhi Leonard, who was a new starter. They had Marc Gasol, who was a new starter. They had Pascal Siakam, who was a new starter. Uh, they had Danny Green, who was a new starter. So four-fifths of their starting lineup were not starters the year before. So I would think that t- I'm going to answer that talent means a lot more. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And it's funny because you, you look at the, the studies of this, if you study it stat-wise, um, which you know I'm big into, you're not so much. Uh, but there is a correlation between having roster continuity and being a good team. Now, that might just be because if you have good players, you want to keep them around. If you're a bad team, you're going to make some changes. Right. And, and so – uh, we you know we don't know a lot. It does seem like roster continuity helps. Certainly, we've seen that from you know the San Antonio Spurs over the years, etc. Uh, I think coaching continuity is a big deal, and, and certainly the Jazz have that one of the well, most longest tenured con- coaches in the I league. I think coaching continuity is a big deal. I think you know guys coming into a adapting to a system mm-hmm. uh, as a term as opposed to the system adapting to the players uh, is a big thing. Um, I, I think. You know, when, you know, Mike Conley comes in and Donovan, you know, and, and Jeff Green and all those guys and Boyan, all those guys come in, they're going to come in. They know what the system, they know the system that they're going to come in to. They know what Quinn likes to run. Quinn's, I'm pretty sure Quinn, they're going to give him a play, those guys a playbook during the summer. Uh, they got to study that playbook. It's like football. You yeah. come into camp and, and you're ready to run. And you're ready to rock and roll. So, Especially um, because it is only four days between the Jazz training camp starting and the Jazz's first preseason game. Yes. 